Okay, so I thought I'd, I'd give you some instruction in, in this section by working through some of the examples out of the textbook, okay? Um, so, uh, this, is, uh, this is on, I don't know what page is. I stole this off the, off the, uh, the, the e-book. So, I, I, I didn't write down the page number, I'm sorry. But it is section 3, 3.4. Okay, so we've got a couple of things to do here. We're going to talk about displacement and average velocity. Well, you've already done you've already done some of this in, in back in chapter two, except now we've got the, all these rules we can use. It makes it we don't have to do the darn limit expressions. So let's take a look at number one. Well, I know the position function is this this t squared minus three t plus two. Now, if you ask me for the displacement, well, I'm going to know how much did it change. Well. Um, so, and they're telling me on the bound, on the, on the range zero to two. So what's S of two? Well, that's going to be four minus six plus two. I see zero. So that means that two would start where it was back where it started. And then, uh, S of zero, where does it start? Well, I think that's just two, right? Cause zero, right? You don't even do that, right? Zero, zero, two. So it must've had some kind of reversal going on in there too, didn't it? So, how much did it displace? Well, um, it started at two. So this is, see it says it's on a coordinate line. So this could be a vertical line, this could be a horizontal line. We don't know what the line is. I mean, maybe I could figure that out, but we really don't, we really don't care. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna not make this two dimensional. I'm gonna make this one dimensional. So here's a line, here's zero, and here's two. So it started here, it went ended up and ended up at zero at the end of zero to two. So the displacement was two to the left if you want. I don't honestly know if we need to uh I mean we could probably express that as negative two. Uh I guess I should go look at uh what math Excel is looking for. So that's negative two, so that's the displacement. And the average velocity, so we did this earlier, um What's S of two minus S of zero over two minus zero? Well, let's see, we know F, S of two is zero. Minus two divided by two, negative one. So that's the average velocity, negative one uh, meters per second. So negative one meters per second. All right, so that's A. Then B uh, find the body speed and acceleration at the endpoints of the interval. Well, if the position function, I'm not sure what you've seen here. I don't remember if Nancy Pai she talks about this. That's the position function. The first derivative is the velocity. The second derivative of S is the acceleration. It's also... V prime, right? Because if the first derivative is the velocity, the derivative of the velocity is acceleration. So that keep that in mind. And then we're not here yet, but just so you know, the third derivative, I did talk about this in one of my other videos. That's that's the that's the jerk. That's the change. That's A prime, right? It's also how it changes, you know, you're driving down the road, yeah, you're accelerating. You hit the brakes, that jerk you feel is the third derivative. It's the change in the acceleration. All righty, so let's do some math here. Let's do some derivatives. Uh, whoops, 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 whoops. Let me undo that. I deleted the wrong thing. Here we go. All right, so what's the derivative of two t squared minus 3t plus 2? Well, we I just see... I just see a bunch of polynomials and they're connected. So the derivative of t squared is 2t to the first. And the derivative of negative 3t is just negative 3. And then the derivative of a constant is 0. And then we, they're asking us for the acceleration. So let's find that while we're at it. Remember, second derivative. So that's just 2. So that's constant. So what's, what's let's answer the easy question first. What's the acceleration of the endpoints? Well, the acceleration is always two. So S double prime of zero is two. S double prime of two is two. Constant. Now let's do, whoops, can I erase this? Yes. 
let's find the velocity at those points. Oh, the speed they want. Well, remember, speed is the absolute value of the velocity, right? You could go 20 miles an hour in reverse. The velocity would be negative, negative 20, but the speed would still be show 20 on your speedometer. So what's S prime of zero? Well, I see two times zero minus three is negative three. Uh, meters, we probably want to include units. Meters per second. We've got to come back and talk about the units on the, on the acceleration. And S prime of two is going to be 2 times 2 minus 3, which is 1 meters per second. Now, what is the, the units on acceleration? If you've done a physics class, you probably already know this. But if you haven't done a physics class, we're dividing. Remember how we did, remember how we did the average? The average velocity was the change in y, which was miles, and then the change in x, was the time, uh, or actually in this case it was seconds. So that way it's miles per second. Well, what if we, here, let me, let me erase some of this. Whoops, uh, here. I remember having a hard time with this, with, with the units were when I was learning this, so try taking the time. So if, I'm taking the derivative. If if I took found the average acceleration, wouldn't that be miles per second? So the first guess, right? The first one minus, uh, and actually we could do the we could do the velocity, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, let's just keep it theoretical, and we'll do the we'll just do the units because that's what I'm focusing on. So my, some number of miles per second divided by uh, minus some other number of miles per second divided by the seconds. Well, if I have miles per second divided by seconds, isn't that the same thing as miles per seconds times one over the seconds? And won't that be miles over second squared? Because there's two squared. So that's what the derivative, that's what the units of your accelerations always are. It's always the unit distance divided by the unit of time squared. So miles per second squared. That's one way you can know whether you're talking about an acceleration even. Uh, the acceleration on Earth, the gravitational acceleration on Earth, Earth is, is a negative 32, um, uh, uh, what is it, negative 32 feet per second? Yeah. And if in the metric system, I believe it's negative uh, 4.9 meters per second. That's a stretch. I think that's what it is, but. Okay, so that is, we did B. We found the, we found the uh, speed. Oh, speed. I don't know if I ever did find the speed. Speed's positive. Speed's always a positive. So I guess I better redo this one because I'm not sure I did that one right. So S prime of T equals 2T minus 3. So S prime of 0 is negative 3. S prime of 2, it was 1, I said. And then speed is the absolute value of it. So the speed at time equals 0. So at the instant, at the instant it's going, and at time we start measuring, the speed is three meters per second, or yeah, meters per second. And at the time we stop, it's at one meters per second. I always like to think about this as I don't know if you're a kid, when you're a kid, you played with those cars where you can, you know, you, those toy cars where you can draw it backwards in the floor and then let and then gets it gets it cranking and you can let it drop to the floor and go. So that's the kind of thing. So the instant it starts is traveling at three meters per second. Alrighty, so did B. So for C, if, when, if ever during the interval, zero to two, does the body change direction? So that we, for that, we look at the, we look at the first derivative, two T minus three. And then we ask ourselves, where does S prime of T equal zero? Well, so where does, where does 2T minus 3 equal zero? 
So that tells me when t equals three halves or one and a half. And then you get to see, so that's, that's what's called a critical value. And when we get more into this, uh, this is a critical value for the first derivative because that's when the derivative is equal to zero. It also happens where the derivative is undefined, but that, that didn't happen here because it's a polynomial. So it changed. So then what you probably want to do, and I would highly recommend you do this, make yourself a little number line, mark in the endpoints, mark in the critical value, so three halves, one and a half, and then you're gonna test variable, test values in between the, those numbers. And you're only gonna test one of them because if it's, if it's negative for that value, it'll be negative for all of them. So I think to me, one looks like a nice number to test because that's in between. So what's, so what's S prime of one? And all I really care about is whether it's positive or negative. I don't actually have to find the correct value. And that in this case, it's negative one. So that tells me the derivative is negative there. That means on that coordinate line, it's going to the left. Because the, the velocity is negative, it's moving to the left of the, of the starting point. Now we'll pick a number on the right side of that. And there's no one and a half. I mean, we want to pick some number. We want to do an easy number so we don't have to think too hard. Uh, how about 1.9? What if I do 1.9? Because all I got to do with that is think about it. Um, two times 1.9 is pretty darn close to four. And that four minus three is, is a positive number. So we tell we know that after... After one and a half seconds, it's moving back to the right. And, and, uh, and uh, where am I going with this? Oh, because, it, you know, because I know it was moving to the left to start with, then it changed and we started moving to the right. It reversed direction at, at, at one and a half seconds. Sometimes what happens, it stops momentarily with the derivative of zero, it stopped momentarily and just continues on the same direction. So you've got you've to be able to account for that. Okay, so that's that's how you do this one. Um, maybe I should do number three just to show you uh, some more things here about that I, that I think is important. Okay, so I have got to find so number three here. Uh, I see a cubic function. The endpoints are zero and three. So what's the displacement? So what's s of three? Well, that's going to be what negative twenty seven plus 27, because it's three squared times three, um, minus nine. So that means at the end, it's at negative nine on the, on the, on the line. Remember, we're moving on a line here, right? So, and then S of zero is gonna be zero. So that means it starts at zero, and at the end of the three, three minutes, it's at negative nine. So nine to the left if you want. Now the average velocity, well, we know the change. We already know S of three minus S of zero, which is just negative nine. And there is a three second change, right? So the average velocity is negative three meters per second. Pretty straightforward. Now we'll do the same thing, only now we'll throw some, now we'll actually use that, what we learned in section three to to find this so what's s prime of t so that's going to be the accelerator the velocity right so net equals negative three t squared plus six t minus three and then double prime the acceleration remember this is v of t this is a of t so negative 6t plus 6 is the acceleration. And now uh, they want us to find the speed and acceleration. So let's see here. Let's see if I get enough room to do this. So s prime of 3 is going to be negative 27 again because it's negative 3 times 3 squared. Uh, plus 18 minus three, let's see, negative 30 plus 18 is negative 12, isn't it? So negative 12 meters per second. And then while we're at it, let's find the acceleration. So what's S double prime of three? Well, that's negative, 
negative 18 plus 6. That's also negative 12, and the, but this is meters per second squared. Okay, so it's interesting they were the same. Um, is there a reason they are the same? I don't know. I don't know. It might just be the... I think it's, I think it's just a, how this function behaves. So that's the acceleration for the... Uh, for the end, the, the right end point, I guess it's not the right end point, but at the most time elapse, lapses. Now let's see, let's see, do some erasing. This is much easier on paper, I'll let you know. But So now we're going to do it zero. What's S prime or what's V of zero? Well, that's zero, that's zero negative three, and what's what's uh, S double prime of zero? Well, that's gonna be zero plus six, so six. And the units here are meters per second, and this is meters per second squared again. So we, we took care of that. Now comes the interesting part, and this is really why I'm doing this problem for you. So we've got S double prime, I'm oh, sorry, S single prime, first derivative, velocity. We want to know when it changes direction. And that's going to be negative 3t squared um, plus 6t minus 3. Now, I get the feeling, I see, I want to know when this is equal to 0, right? I see a quadratic equation. So I'm going to factor out, I'm going to factor out a, a negative 3. Okay, and that's what I'm getting there. Now, if this had been non-factorable or I got an equation, see, like right here, I guess I should finish my thought. Uh, I'm going to write x. t minus 1 times t minus 1, right? That's how that factors. Suppose you're having a hard time factoring. What can you do? Well, you would use a quadratic formula, right? Or completing the square. If you have a tool like on your phone, or if you have a graphing calculator, um, there's, there's things you can upload to it, and I'll, I'll point you to one. Um, it's okay to say, it's what I wanna see is I wanna see this. Now, I mean, this is calculus. Making you use a quadratic formula, that, you know, for college algebra, definitely. Uh, Pre-calculus, maybe if it's a complex route. Um, but for calculus, use your tools. Um, you could, do, as long as you write this, or you could even write where it is a V of T equals zero, and then use whatever tech you want to use to find it, that, that would be sufficient. I mean, sometimes it's not sufficient, but you'll know, I'll let you know when. Um, and most of the time it is. Okay. One thing, so what's the solution? Remember that stretch factor doesn't change the zeros, so I'm just going to get rid of it. So that tells me when T equals one, there's a critical value. This is a critical value of the first derivative. So now we've got to do that little test Rooney and see, let's see, where are we going? We are, all right, so this is V of T or S prime of T, zero, three, and one. I want to see if it changes direction there. So here's my derivative, or actually even this is my derivative. That might be easier to use um, at at, well, let's test the endpoint. Zero is not a critical value. Let's test the endpoint. So negative three times negative one times negative one. I see three negatives. That tells me anything left of one will be negative. Now, now three is not a critical value. So negative three times a positive times a positive. That's also negative. So what this tells me, it never reverses direction on that interval zero to three. See how, see the test of how I test and see if the derivative changes sign? That's how we know um, whether it reverses to reverse the direction, okay? So that's a great, this was a great question to do. I'm glad I did it. I also wanted you to do number five because of the rational expressions. You know, six, six, you got to use a quotient rule, right? Um, this one though is a little weird. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite S as uh, S of T as 25 T to the negative 2 minus 5 times T to the negative 1. And now 
Um, well, I guess, do I need to do this? Do you need me to see a, do a, where there's a, the displacement and the average velocity? I mean, that's just, you have to remember for a, you just plug in, you're going to plug in five, find S of five, find F of one, subtract them, find what the difference is, right? Oh, what is it? Oh, uh, let's see. So isn't that one, is see, that's going to be one, because 25 over five squared minus five over five, so one minus one, so zero, and S of one will be 25 minus five. So that's that's traveling, so that's 20. And then the average, velo average velocity is 20 minus zero over four, right? Because it's five minus one. So that's gonna be five meters per second, is the average velocity. Positive, moving right. So. I guess that was worth doing. So now let's do the derivatives because now they're asking us to find what's the acceleration, what's the velocity, what's the velocity, what's the acceleration, and then find those values at the endpoints. So S prime of T equals negative 50 T to the negative three. Remember, bring down the two in front, take away one, and then plus five T to the negative two, and then S double prime of T equals positive 150 t to the negative 4 minus 10 t to the negative 3. Now, my preference is, you know, maybe you understand negative exponents a lot better than I do. I, I have a hard time seeing that in my head. I mean, I know what they are and I know how to get them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these things as as uh, fractions. So, so S prime here, I'm trying to write F of prime of X. So S prime of T equals negative 50 over T cubed plus five over T squared. And then S double prime of T equals 150 over T to the fourth minus 10 over T to the third. Here, let me clean up my writing a little bit there. Okay, so now what is, what is, uh, how can I, can, let's see if I can shrink this up a little bit. Oh, I can, good. Okay, so what's S prime of five? Well, that's going to be negative 50 over 125 plus five over 25, right? Uh, I guess we should clean this up a little bit. Um, well, this is one fifth. Let's see, I can divide both of those by five, so that'll give me 10 over 25. Then I can divide by five again, so negative two over five. Oh, that makes it a lot easier, huh? So, so negative two over five plus one fifth is, is negative one fifth. So S prime of five is negative one fifth meters per second. Oh, and while we're at it, let's do the, let's do the second derivative. S double prime of five equals 150. Let's see, 125 times four is 625. 625, Dan. Minus 10 over 125. Oh, let's see. 25 goes into 156 times. 25 goes into that. Um, let's see, five goes into 125. So it isn't 25 times... It's 25 from 25. Is that 625? Yeah. And then these we can divide both by five. So that's five over 25. So that's going to be one over 25 meters per second squared. Okay. So there's the acceleration and the velocity at t equals five. Okay. Let me stop this and clean it up. Okay, so then now let's find it at one. Is it zero or one? It's one. Oh, this is a lot easier. So S prime of one, one, one equals negative 50 plus five, negative 45 meters per second. And then 150 over one minus 10 over one is 140 meters per second squared. Oh, that one was a lot easier. Okay, so we found we found these values, so that's B, and then I think, 
wasn't it? Uh, when does when does the particle change direction? And this is the reason. I mean, yeah, rewriting these things so that it's irrational. Excuse me. So it's a fraction. It was part of. I guess they aren't rational functions. Or they are rational functions because a variable in the bottom. That wasn't really the really reason why I did this. I wanted to show you how to combine this because sometimes this gives people a hard time. When you're dealing with rational functions, you're going to find the zeros. Hold this in mind that I want to find out where is it zero in the numerator because zero divided by a number is zero. Uh, if I'm looking for zeros in the denominator, I'm looking for vertical asymptotes, right? So what I, all, what I want to do is get this, get this 50 over t cubed plus 5 over t squared, so it's a single fraction. In that case, I want to write them all as t cubed over t cubed, right? So the 50 is all set. Negative 50 is all set. But that 5 needs to be multiplied by t over t, right, in order to get t cubed. So plus 5t. Now, what I want to know is I want to know where does that equal 0, right? Uh, 0 equals 0. I'll write it over here. So where does 0 equal negative 50 plus 5t? So do you see how I made that be a single fraction? And now it's really easy to find the zeros. 5t. So t equals 2 is a critical value. That's where we also know 0 is a critical value, but 0 is outside outside of 1 to 5. So we don't have to worry about that. They did this deliberately. So now let's 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 uh let's pick up our uh, number line here. And this is my number line for v of t or the at first derivative, right? And we know 2 is a critical value. Now let's pick numbers to the left of left of two, well, one's not a critical value, so why can't I just plug in one? And I already did that, didn't I? Didn't I already do that? Uh, what was that? It was negative 45, so it's negative. Now we're going to pick a number to the right of two, and uh, uh, so five. Uh, that was that was not that was not. Uh, Zero, but I don't remember what the answer was. You probably wrote it down. So I'm, I'm going to have to go through and do it again. So negative 50 over 125 plus 5 over 25. Uh, this becomes 120. This becomes 25 over 125. We get common denominators. And that's a negative number. So again, this doesn't change signs. If I did this right. This doesn't change signs, so it never reverses direction. It all it's always moving to the left during that during on one to five. And isn't this the one where it started at a positive number and ended up a negative number? Mm, I don't know. I'm gonna go check myself off screen. Yeah, no, I'm all right because I I uh, s of one was if I'm doing my math right now is five is twenty. And then S of 5 is 0, so it's moving backwards, right? Remember, it started at, if this is the position function at time time 5. I'm sorry, yeah, at time 5. Uh, no, 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 I want to start this. I don't want to have time on the graph. I want to have the distance on the graph. So at... Time zero, or I'm at time five, it's at zero. At time one, it's at 20, if I did my arithmetic right. At, at time one, it's at 20, right? So it's moving to the left, right? It starts, this initially it's here at five to five seconds, it's over there. Okay, so yeah, that makes sense to me that uh, the velocity is negative on that range. It momentarily stops at, at time two, but then it just continues. Okay, so good, good. So that was, hopefully this helps you do the rest of the, well, I'm going to do the rest of these first six or so. I'm going to also do the particle motion one, number seven. So for this one, let's see here. They want us to find the acceleration each time the velocity is zero and then the converse of that. So uh, S prime of T equals 3T squared minus 12T plus 9. And S double prime of T equals 6T minus 12. And find the acceleration each time the velocity is zero. So we're looking for where does S prime of T equals zero? 
Well, because I'm pretty good at factoring, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some factoring. And then, um, remember, because the stretch factor here doesn't change the zeros. That just changes how high the function goes, you know, how fast it grows, right? The vertical stretch. Um, we can ignore it. So I'm going to factor out a 3 and just set the whole thing equal to 0 and see if I can factor it. So t minus 4t plus 3. Okay, yes, yes, this factors. I don't use, need to use any quadratic formula. So t minus 3 and t minus 1. So... When t equals 3, it's the velocity 0. And when t equals 1, the velocity is 0. So now they want me to find the acceleration at each of those. So s double prime of, of 3 equals, let's see, 18 minus 12 is 6 uh, meters. Uh, we don't know any any... We don't know the units for time, do we? So I guess we don't need to worry about units because I don't know the units. I don't know the units for time. Okay, so and then s double prime of one is the other critical value, and that's going to be negative six, isn't it? So that works there. Now we're going to reverse the issue. Uh, find. Find the speed each time the acceleration is zero. So remember, speed is an absolute value. So where does S double prime of T equal zero is what they're asking us. So where does 6T minus 12 equal zero? Well, T is at 2, then add 12 divided by 6. So we only have one calculation due. Now they want us to find the speed. So we're going to go back to our velocity formula, our first derivative. So 3 times 9... Uh, 3 times 4, pretend you didn't see that, 3 times 4 minus 24 plus 9, so let's see, 12 plus 9 is, is 21, 21 minus 24 is negative 3, and because they want the speed, we do the absolute value of that, so 3. Okay, so there's that. Now the next one's a little, little, little different because what we're going to have to do is worry about when is it moving. See, they're looking for total distance, just not the displacement. So we get to ask ourselves, when is the velocity negative? When is the velocity positive? Find those two values and add them together. Let's see. I think we found, didn't we find the critical values of this was one and three? Um, it might be easier to write this thing all out factored, too. Um, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to write it out as 3. What is it? T minus 1 and T minus 3. So I'm going to draw my number line. Here's my first derivative. Um, uh, I know... I know they don't say anything about endpoints. Oh, the five, yes, they do. Find the total distance between zero and two. So here's zero, here's two. That's our endpoints. So our critical value of three doesn't come into the play. So one does, though. So now we're going to test a number to the left of one. Well, zero isn't a critical value. So if I substitute zero in here, don't I have a negative one times a negative three, which is a positive number? So this is positive in this range. And two is not a critical value, so won't that be won't that be um, negative negative? Yeah, yeah, and that's again it's positive, so we don't have to worry about positive negatives. They picked it for that anyway. So all we got to do is find find our values, find what's s of zero, what's s of two, and then we can subtract them. I guess right. So s of zero and the original function is zero. S of 2 is 8 minus 24 um, plus 18, right? 2, 18, 4 times 6 is 24. And yeah, so 26 minus 24 is 2. So it traveled 2 meters in that, in that span of time, okay? Okay, 10, uh, lunar projection, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. 
see how, I don't know if you've studied, taken physics, I don't know if you've studied projectile motion, but usually what it is, is it's like if it's, if it's, uh, The V, the V sub zero, see that initial velocity, see how that 24 and 24 is there. And this is related to the acceleration on the, on the planet. Uh, we won't get there yet. Um, you, maybe you'll start seeing some patterns as you do more and more of these. Okay, so they want us to find the rock's velocity and acceleration time T. So if we have 24 T minus four fifths, sorry, I love fractions. I don't like decimals. Decimals make me think too hard. Um, so there's the velocity, there's the position function. So then we're going to do the first derivative is 24 minus 8 fifths t. And then the acceleration is that derivative. So 24 is 0, see negative 8 fifths. So do you see how, I don't know if you've noticed this pattern. Uh, let's see, what's a unit? Meters per second squared. Um, and this is meters per second, of course. Do you see how this coefficient here, this coefficient here has been doubled when it's when it's a parabola, parabolic motion, that's why they call it. That's that's always true. On Earth, usually these equations start out, if you're doing in in in, in the US unit and customary units, they usually start out as 16 t squared plus some initial velocity plus some initial height. And if you think about it, uh, oh, this is usually negative. And, and then um, if you take the derivative of this, you're going to get negative 32. Uh, well, if you, uh, this is not right. If this is the first, if this were the first derivative and uh, uh, I'm messing myself up, but this is the acceleration due to gravity. That's what I want you to keep in mind, that this is usually twice what you start with. Okay. Yeah, well, this would be right, right, right. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Here, let me let me talk to you about this. I can do this. So, if this is on our on Earth, our customary units, uh, if this is the if this is the some I don't know, let's say it got fired with a hundred feet per second, and it stood, was fired off at six feet high. Okay, that's the position function. The first derivative is negative 32t plus 100, and we could do some more work with that. Second derivative is just negative 32. See how that is the acceleration due to gravity on Earth? So this is always twice that amount it, with parabolic motion. I digress, though. All right, so now what do they want us to do? Uh, we did A, so here's my two formulas. So what you could write is you could write, here, let me, you could write this as V of T, could write this as a of t if you wanted to. You could also get really fancy and do this. Um, how long does it take to reach the highest point? Well, in algebra, pre-calculus algebra, you learned, oh, if I find this is a parabola, so if I find the line of symmetry, x equals negative b over 2a, I could find I could find the the x coordinate of the vertex, right? So doing that, let's see. Negative 24 over 2 times negative 4 fifths is negative 24 over negative 8 fifths. Those negatives cancel out. 24 times 5 over 8. The 8s cancel out. We get 3. So at 15 seconds, it reaches its highest, uh, highest point. So that's doing algebra, and which is good. I mean, if it's a parabola, that's a great thing to do. So hold that thought that, hold that thought. The other thing that happens is if, if this is thrown, thrown up like that, what's its velocity right at that peak point? If you think about derivative is the slope of the tangent line, what's the slope of that tangent line right there? I hope you're saying it's zero. So what we're going to do in calculus, from a calculus viewpoint, we're going to say, where does S prime of T equal zero? So where does 24 minus 8, fifths t equals zero. Well, you're going to, I hope you see, we're going to get the same math. So 24 equals eight fifths t. We're going to divide by eight fifths, which is the same as multiplying by five over eight. 
the eight cancels with the three. Three times five is 15. So at 15 seconds, it is at its maximum. Either way, I, I would love to have you start using the calculus calculus method because um, we're going to ask you questions in the, with cal in calculus viewpoint. So, uh, and that that way the calculus method works for any kind of function rather than just a parabola. Um, how high does the rock go? Well, I know uh, I know at t equals fifteen it's a maximum. So why not really just find in this s of s of fifteen? And I could crunch that on a calculator, but you can right you're going to do twenty four times fifteen minus 4 over 5 times 15 squared. So if you want to, you can go ahead and do that. I, I, I don't want to do that here. Um, you'll have to do it for math, math lab. So let's see. How long does it take the rock to reach half of its maximum height? You know what? I got to do this. I forgot. You know, I, I have actually done this on paper. I just don't know where my papers are at this minute. Um, so 24 times 15 huh, minus 4 divided by 5 times 225, right? 15 squared. Uh, yeah, 180. I knew it was a nice number. And then, so half that height's 90. So aren't we solving this equation now? Aren't we, say, solving... Let's see. Oh, uh, sorry. How high does it go? Uh, it goes 180. That's B. How long does it take to reach half its maximum? Well, aren't, aren't we interested where does 24t minus 4 fifths t squared equals 90, we're looking for that time. And isn't this just a quadratic equation? So what I'm gonna do is make it so the t squared is positive. So 4 fifths t squared uh, minus 24 t plus 90. And I really would like to get rid of that fraction. So I'm gonna multiply everything by five. 4 t squared minus, let's see, that's 120 t plus 450 and maybe I could factor that I don't know you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use my calculator and use uh, yeah I could I'm being a little lazy here but I really don't care about where <laughs> I don't care about the algebra here I just want to find out the answer negative 120 and 450 uh, and actually it doesn't look like it factors it looks like it would have to have a have to use a quadratic formula so I, I saved myself some time. So I'm getting this equal to zero at 4.393 and 25.607. Now this is a parabola, so this is on the way up and this is on the way down. And they aren't asking me, they aren't asking me at what times is it? It says when it when it when does it how long does it take to reach half its height? So um we know that it's the first one, right? It's when this first reaches it. So that's the time. Not much calculus there. And then how long is the rock aloft? Two ways to do this. We know when it hits the ground, not the instant it hits the ground, but after it hits the ground, um, isn't the velocity zero? So we could... we could come back up to our velocity function. Well, the height zero, not the velocity. Well, the velocity is zero too. Uh, the height zero. I guess that's how I want to do this. I don't know why the velocity wouldn't be zero though either. Let's play this out. Let's play this with a, let's play this with um, uh, just the symmetry thing. So I know this, this, this projectile starts on the ground and ends on the ground. I know that's 15 seconds when it's maximum. And since this is symmetric, that's also 15 seconds. So at 30 seconds, it's on the ground again. So what is, if we take a look at, our velocity function, 24 minus 8 over 5 times 30. Is that equal to 0? 24 minus 8 times... 
Oh, this would be this would be how fast it hits the ground, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm wrong. I'm wrong thinking about it this way. Minus six times eight is forty-eight. Yeah, so at negative twenty-four feet per second. That's how, that's how that's how fast it hits the ground. Or meters per second. Yeah. So I was I was incorrect thinking about I could set the velocity equal to zero. Because that would be the peak. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I was thinking. I was wrong thinking about it that way. All right. So I guess the easiest way to do that is symmetry. And I think that's it. Uh, 11. Let me do 11 because you guys have a, a, a my open math or a math Excel question about that like that too. So here, let me clear this off. Good thing you guys don't have to watch all these. I don't know. How long is this video getting up to? Quite a while. This just this just this one slide is eleven minutes. I'm sorry. Uh, whoops! I'm gonna undo what I just did. Here, do I need to undo everything? They're telling us. They're telling us the bearing reaches maximum height at after twenty seconds. Notice we don't know the planet, so we don't know we don't know the acceleration due to gravity. Um. They did tell me the initial velocity, and see that's why they have that fifteen t in negative one half uh, gravity acceleration to gravity times time squared. So that's the value we're looking for, and we know at time equals twenty, it's at its maximum height. If I take, do I need to? Do I care about the maximum height? I just want to know. I want to know the value of g s uh, of uh, of this. So, S prime of T equals 15 minus 1. What do I say? Remember, bring the 2 down in front. So, 1 half times 2 is 1 times G sub S T. I know the velocity... And I know, so yeah, then I know the, it reaches that velocity of zero at, at 20 seconds. So zero equals 15 minus G sub S times 20. So 15 equals uh, 20 G sub S. And so if I divide by 20, doesn't G equals three over five seconds? Uh, three over five meters per second squared, right? So that's the... That's the, I, fifteen divided by twenty reduces to three over five, right? So that's how that's the that's the value. So that wasn't too bad using using the derivative. See, this would might be maybe you could do this with algebra. I think it's a lot easier this way. I mean, that's certainly a lot easier equation to deal with. Okay, so that's it for this slide. All right, so uh, this is a problem. This marginal cost problem usually gives people a hard time they have to ask for help on it so might as well do a video on it um so the average cost per machine is uh is the, what we've been doing with a slope of the secant line or right the average average velocity same 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 math so when you see the word i'll give you a little heads up when you see the marginal cost uh, something about marginal cost you're working going to be working with the first derivative okay but we're building to there for this one so um, average cost of machine. So what's the cost of 100 machines? Well, I got 11,000, if I did that right. Let's see, let me make sure. Yeah, I got 11,000. So all I did was I substituted in 100 in for X, right? And then the cost of zero machines is, well, everything's zero except for the 2,000. Now when I subtract those... I get, uh, what do I get, 9,000? Uh, but then I, get, then I get to divide it by 100, so I'm getting 90, $90 per machine. So that's the average cost. Now we want to find the marginal cost. The marginal cost is the first derivative, and then we substitute in 100. So C prime of X, the 2,000 is gone. The 100 is still there. Then minus 0.2X, right? Because we brought the exponent down in front and subtracted 1. 
So what's C prime of 100? Well, that's going to be 100 minus uh, 20, right? Because 100 times 0.2 is 20. So that's $80. So that was close to 90. Remember, it was the average value, and this is not. So this is dollars per machine. Now, for part C is where I think this is interesting. That It's cool that it works. They want us to find the cost. So we're going to find C of 101 machines. And we already know the cost of, of 100 machines was what? Uh, I didn't do that. I, I guess I didn't do that. Or I did it once up above there. Uh, let's see. So the cost of 100 machines... Come on, turn on the calculator. The cost of 100 machines was 11000 Let me find on my calculator here. I'm just going to change the 100 to 101. And calculate that. So now I'm getting 11079.9. And now to find the average value, we're going to subtract those two numbers, which is um, what? Uh, 79.9 uh, divided by 1, right? Because it's 101 minus 1. And notice that is darn close to uh, 80 bucks. If we could say, and remember, if we, were, if we were taking the limit of this average value, would would come up with a would would see we 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 would get approach eighty to eighty dollars, okay. So that's that relation to economics. Okay, now I, this is so cool. These graphs. What we've got to do is we've got to match up. What is the original function? What is the first derivative? What is the second derivative? I'm going to show you a couple of ways to think about this, especially when we have things that are kind of polynomialish. You can also do this with trig functions too, but we aren't there yet. Um, I see, remember if we had, if we had started out with an x to the third, the derivative of that would be three x squared. The derivative of that would be six x. So we're starting from a cubic, going to, going to a quadratic, going to a linear. So if you keep that in mind, must be, this is d2, the sec second derivative, right? A d dt squared. Okay. So that means the quadratic will be the next one. So that's going to be ds dt, the first derivative. And it must be c is the position function, s. Now, how can we do this with something more complicated? Well, here's the original function. Here, let me clean this up a little bit. Here's the, the original function is here. You see that slope? Well, we didn't know that was, suppose we didn't know that was the original function. I see this has a zero here. I see this has a, this has a slope of zero. So, and you see how this function is increasing? And down here, that's positive. The y is positive. So the velocity is positive. So that means the function is increasing. So, that is true. Then it's zero, and then it turns negative, and you see how the function is decreasing here? And because the, this is negative, it's decreasing there. This couldn't be, the yellow line couldn't be it, because that's, all, that's always negative, right? So that tells me, um, that tells me some other stuff about the function, that it's, it's um, that it's, well, it changes concavity, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. We're not there yet, but it, this tells me that the first derivative is always decreasing, right? Because, because the y, the, this remember this is the x, this is the this is s double prime, because that's negative s prime is decreasing. So and we see the see this red, this is going down all the time until here, and then see how that turns. That has a slope of zero. There's that second derivative is zero. That is zero there too. That tells me the. The second derivative, or the first derivative, stops increase, stops decreasing, and turns around to decreasing, and sure enough, and you see how that crosses the x-axis there at the exact same point that turning point happens, the slope is zero. So there, I was able to do that. I slipped up and talked about talked about concavity once. So, but I was able to talk about just increasing, decreasing. That's so. That's another way to think about this. 
Um, I encourage you to start thinking about it this way rather than just looking at the degree in a polynomial because not all functions are polynomials. I really don't want to do this video here. I really, I'd love to have you folks think about it and if you're stuck, ask in the discussion forum. But I love this problem. What I want you to notice about this is this is not the graph of the function, but this is the graph of the velocity. Velocity versus time. So how can we find from the graph of a velocity, how can we get the acceleration if all these derivatives are slopes, I'll say, and then what does the velocity tell me? If the velocity is positive, that tells me the, the rocket in this case would be going up, right? So think, keep that in mind. Let's talk about it in the forum. Uh, but it's a great question. I really like it. This I will take the time to talk about. So we've got this particle moving along this line, left and right on this line, kind of like those first couple questions we did, or I did, and you did some like it on that. So this is the graph of the function, right? Not the graph of the velocity. So if I want to talk about, if I want to talk about uh, the velocity, first derivative, I have to look at the slopes of this, okay? So here the slope is positive. Because that slope is positive, that tells me it's moving to the right. Because the slope is zero here, that means it's stopped. So from that one second time, time span, span, span of time, the particle stopped. Now the slope is negative. So it's deep moving left. So it's what happened is it started moving here. It stopped, hung there for a second. And then because this is negative, it started moving back at, at uh, time two and a half, it crosses where it's originally started because right, this is the position, that's at zero. And then it's moving to the left, then it hangs, the slope is zero, and then it continues moving left. Okay, so that's how we can read that. So when is the particle moving left? When is it moving right? When is it standing still? So it's moving, it's moving right here, and that's the only, pl oh, and, and then, yeah, this is the position function. So it's moving right here because the slope is positive. So uh, moving right, slope is positive. Uh, here it's moving left and left again because the slope is negative. When is it standing still? At these two values right here because that's where the slope is zero. And then we want us to graph the velocity and the speed. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, because these are just lines, it's gonna be fairly easy. Um, I'm gonna start, I don't know why I made that graph this way. Let me erase it. Um, I don't need negative values, I only need positive values. Okay. I see I see the slope, so let's number, actually let's number it. one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I see between one, zero and one is going up two over one. So that slope is two. And, and we're gonna have these all be open because we've got those corners, right? You've, we've learned about corners and cusps. And then from one to two, it's zero here. Let me go to a different ink here for that derivative. And then, it, then between two and three, it's negative, let's see, what is it? What is that slope? Is it negative two? I'm going down four over one, so it's negative four, wow. So one, two, three, four. So from two to three is way down here at negative four. And then from three to five, it's zero. And then from five to six, it's a slope of down two over one. So negative two. Okay, so that's the that's the speed, I mean, that's the velocity. Now, remember the, how the speed's just the, just the absolute value? So all we've gotta do is change this negative four to positive four. 
and then changes negative two to positive two. And that this so uh, this would be the graph of the speed. Okay. Now notice this is the graph of the velocity, not the graph of the of the position function like before. So where these are the slopes of the original original function. So, and now what you want to think about, remember when I did those number lines, we could actually do this here. I see a critical value for this. I, I mean, I honestly wouldn't do this, but I think it'll help you if I relate it. I see a critical value at two, because that's where that derivative, that velocity is equal to zero. I see another critical value at seven. Uh, you know what I probably better do is number this out a little better. Here, I really got lazy and went out and got a piece of graph paper. Let's see. So I'm going to use this line here. I'm going to call that zero. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I guess I didn't need all that paper. There's ten. Uh, actually, I'm not going to label it because I probably need. I'm probably going to need that space. So here we go. Um, uh, when does the body, oh yeah, yeah, we're going to, so the critical values are, are 2 at x equals 2, and at x equals 7, and now between 0 and 2, do you see how the velocity is up above the x-axis? That tells me it's positive here. Between 2 and 7, it's negative, right, because it's below the x-axis, and then from 7 to 10, it's above the x-axis again, so that's positive. So when does the body reverse direction? Well, there's a sign change at 2 and at 7. So both places it reverses direction. It starts off, and so then, yeah, then when they want us to do is what? What do they want us to do? Um, no, 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 no. Let me, I can't, now I can't see the question. When, when is it? When's it moving at a constant speed? Well, that's when that's when the derivative, so the speed is constant, it's not changing. That means the acceleration is zero. That means the velocity is not changing. So the place that's not changing is right here. So between between I guess three seconds and and six seconds, it's got a constant rate of speed and it happens to be negative three. So it's moving backwards, moving to the left. Uh, uh, at, at the rate of negative three units per uh, minutes per second, uh, meters per second. Okay, graph the body speed, graph the acceleration. Now this we can do. Okay, so the speed is the absolute value of the velocity. <clears throat> so this is the graph of the velocity. So all we've got to do is do any place that this graph goes below the x-axis, we've got to make it positive. <laughs> So between, let's see, so from one to three, or from zero to one, it's got this line. And then from, from one to two, it looks like this. And then we're gonna flip this uh, trapezoid or whatever it is, right? So we're gonna go back up to three and does that in the space of one, it goes from two to three, right? And then it's constant between three and six. And then it starts decreasing back to zero. In this case, it's increasing back to zero. And then it goes back up. So then, and then it goes up at eight. It goes up to three again. And then from eight until 10, it looks like that. So that's the speed. Now, the acceleration is the is the slopes here right just like the last question i did except now we're talking about the slope of the velocity so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to since i've got the graph paper space here um one two three four one two three four five one two three four five and that's ten so the slope of this line between zero and one is three so let me use green ink. So between zero and one, the slope is three, and I gotta use open intervals because there's corners, right? The derivative is not defined. The, the, the slopes, the derivatives of this graph aren't defined at the corners. 
Then I see his dropping six, running two. So isn't that negative three? So that's negative three between uh, one and three. So let's see, one, two, three. Negative three between one and three. Then it's zero between three and six. Then it's going up six over two. So that's a slope of three between six and eight. And then it's a slope of, let's see, it's dropping three and going two. So negative one and a half, right? Uh, this should be closer to here, except it's not supposed to be filled in. Uh, let me fix this. And then negative one and a half, I said, so there to here. And that's the acceleration. So that's acceleration based on T. So F double prime of T, right? This is the absolute value of F prime, F prime of T. Speed. Okay, hopefully that helps. Important ideas here, folks. This will get a handle on this because this will save you so much effort later on.